hello it's Joey and today I'm making pocket and envelope closures using some really basic supplies. So today I'm going to make these little closures using bits of scrap cardstock. So you might want to use collaged pieces of paper, you can use just junk mail, that's from an old magazine. I've used painty papers to make some, that's that green one. That's more junk mail and you could also make them from the back and the front of an exercise book. I'm also going to be sharing my tips for adding them to your projects. For example, how to put them in exactly the right place so that the envelope flap of a handmade envelope will tuck neatly behind and just be really smart and also perhaps what sort of different brads you might like, like to use and I've got a few to share with you today. I use these closures on pockets like these, I've just been making a few up and it's a really neat way of keeping the top flap attached to the bottom and I'll show you how I do that and of course I use them on the back of envelope flaps to tuck the flap in and what's absolutely fabulous about these is they are super quick to make, they do use up your scraps which is great but by making them as I'm going to do today in the colours and patterns that you see here and I've got quite a few, they really I think add value to your projects, they take them to the next level because by adding the colour and pattern you can really get them to coordinate and they, they just look fabulous. I've written the steps that are following today down so I'll make life easy for us by talking through this process but you can take a screenshot and I hope that will help and I've also just jotted down a few of my top tips for beginners and I'll illustrate these as we go through and make these closures for pockets and envelopes today. So let's start making some of these little closures and in the process for making them the first step is to choose which cardstock you want to make them from and then to either decorate it or use something that's already collaged. So for step one I've chosen just a, this is the back of an old exercise book and it's fairly thick card and I've kept it because I just really didn't want to throw something as good as this away. But like I say, you could just create your own in lovely colours. I've, I've painted here a piece from a calendar, so a page from an old calendar. I think I added a bit of glitter glue on top. And then to make it thicker, I added another book page. So even if you don't have cardstock, you can make a base that will work in the same way. You just want it to have a little bit of thickness so that it can resist and help a flap stay down. I've also used just the back of, this was uh, an alumni magazine, again fairly thick and I've made use of the patterns in the paper. So use whatever you have. I've also had a go at punching out of some collage pieces of paper. So something I like to do to make up my own cardstock is just basically glue pieces of scrap paper onto other paper and that will leave you with a thickness that will work for this project. So again another way of using up your scraps. Lots of fun too. So start with whatever piece of cardstock you want to use and our first decision is to choose what sort of colour we want to turn this into and this is where I think we really make something special and add some value to our projects. So for something like this, for example, so this is a little pocket, I can see the browns and the fawns and I wanted something to complement it to really make it look more high end. So I've made a little closure here, this circle, and added it with a brad. And on the closure, I've got, can you see, just a little bit of bronze and gold colours and some very thin washi tape to give some pattern. And it's this kind of detail with this beautiful sage coloured brad that I think brings the whole project together. So if we're going to decide on here maybe to do some more in bronze and golds, obviously it's a pretty simple exercise. We're just going to add 
a little bit of colour. And the easiest way, we're going to make a row of these little circles, our closures, is for me just to get a bit of water on the cardboard. That looks like it's enough. And you can use whatever you have. You could use watercolour pencils, you could use watercolour paint. I just go along and get a little bit of pigment, some form of colour, on the cardboard. And I particularly like it if it's not very tidy because I want in the brad some of that mottled effect and I feel that that really does add something. It makes it not flat and dull. So all I'm doing is just taking a couple of paint sticks. These are Little Brian is the brand paint sticks. Chosen a couple of colours and I'm just daubing on top with a little bit of water. Maybe I'll just go back and add a bit more of that gold because I love it. So you could splat on these with paint. We've done that before in some projects. Just add whatever colours you want and maybe just a little bit of pattern. And all I'm going to do is let that dry or indeed get my paper based hairdryer and just let that dry before we move on to the next step. So I've dried it off with a heat gun just to speed things up and in fact I couldn't resist, I just added a few little splats of gold paint on there. Not very tidy, it just goes with the range of colours that I feel like making my closures from today. So we have chosen our cardstock and decorated it and now what I'm going to do is punch a hole in the corner. I'm pleased that I've got colours which I know will coordinate with my project, whatever I'm going to produce, and that's the way that we're going to add extra value today. So I'm going to take a hole punch, and this is one that punches circles in a one inch diameter. So across here it's an inch, and that seems to be a size that works really well for both decorating and using on lots of different projects. So I've been making up lots and lots in this size. So we want to take a punch and just punch out one circle on the bottom right of our piece of cardstock. So obviously whatever you use, if you're using collaged papers, they need to be thin enough that you can get your punch through it. And make sure that the cardstock is butted up absolutely as far as it can go neatly and squarely into the circle punch before you punch. That's really key. So I've got it in. Let's just take out one circle. There we go. Not too difficult. What I'm going to do is take my card that I've decorated and now punched a hole in and I'm going to just take another bit of washi tape and attach it to my grid mat because I'm going to use the squares on my grid mat to help me line up this very neatly and then just add some extra decoration by way of some narrow washi. Now you don't need to do this step if you don't want to. You can definitely make, here we are, lovely little closures with some gorgeous colours on them without adding the washi. But I like to add it because I feel that a dainty stripe or two just takes these closures to the next level and makes them really smart. It also means if you use the same washi, just this thin washi on your projects, you've got that sense of coordination, which if we do it when we wear clothes, I think we can feel quite smart and all pulled together. And I feel that that's, that works on our craft projects too. So I'm going to adhere this to a grid mat. And to do that, I'm just going to use a little bit of washi to do it. So I'm going to put this down on the grid mat and it's important that I show you where and how. Let me do it with an example. I'm going to attach it so that the squares from the grid mat behind are plumb centre in the circle that we've punched. So if I put it down here, let me just attach this with some washi, I'm going to make my little piece of cardstock so that the squares on the grid behind are absolutely in the centre. So if I've got a couple of squares here and a bit above, I've got as much above and below and I've got as much to the right of my two main squares as I have to the left. I'll just look along here and line it up 
and then I'll get a couple of bits of tape down to hold it in place. And what I'm doing, the reason I'm doing that, is so that when I add some strips of washi, it makes it really easy for that to be in a straight line and so we can batch make or mass make a number of these little circles. So I'm going to choose from my collection of little washes here some colours that might work with gold. Let's try this one. So these are from the washi tape shop and they very kindly sent them to me and I thought I would just have a play and this is what happened. I will leave a link in the description box down below if you fancy treating yourself to a few of these lovely little thin washi strips. I feel that they are quite useful for lots of projects. I'm going to be having a play. So what I want is a strip of washi in a very straight line and I'm using my grid lines to line up where that washi goes so that when it reappears I start here and I see how far the washi is from some of these lines and I'm going to make sure it reappears at the far end in the same place and if I keep it taut and straight and just run my finger along then what I should have is a nice straight line that is lined up so it's aligned with in the right place this edge here. So basically I've got not a wiggly line of washi and I'll just tear that off or cut it off. It's quite tough stuff actually. Let me do that with a pair of scissors. Leave a, leave a bit of a, an extra bit at the end. I'm just going to do the same again and put it, the second one, pa parallel, nice and straight, using the grid lines to position it in the same place in the lower half of the circle that I have punched. So all I'm doing really is using the grid lines at this point to make life easy, to add pattern on top of our lovely gold and bronze, because that's the colour I've chosen as the background for my closure, given the projects I've got, and I'm going to add these stripes. And if you wanted, you could just get a ruler and a pen out or a pencil and add stripes in that way too. I think it's the adding of the stripes that just really makes them smart. Trim that off. And now all we need to do is just peel that off. There we go, gently, and punch out some circles. So let's just check our process so that again, keeping things easy. We've chosen our cardstock and decorated it, punched a hole in one corner on the bottom right. We added it to our grid mat and we've added washi tape, that's an optional step and now I'm going to punch out some circles and again we want to use the edge of the cardstock for accuracy all the way along here. So just as we did when we did punch the first circle, take your hole punch, I'll do it the, the wrong way up then I can see what I'm doing, take that over your card that's now decorated with both paints and washi and again butt it up to the edge of the cardstock so really tuck it into your hole punch so that it's neatly in oh, that's a toughie let's get that out we're using the fact that the hole punch is in exactly the same place relative to the edge every time so that when we punch out these circles those little pieces of washi tape are also in the place we want them to be. It's not the card, it's me. My hands are just really sticky. Ooh, I think I dropped it. Let's keep going. And just go along, get it in the right place, turn it over, and do this by pressing down. That's so much easier than holding it the other way. Just work along, get it in the right place, make sure it's butted up, turn it over, press down and what I'm getting is a collection of these beautiful little circles with washi tape very smartly placed it would take you forever to do that on every individual one and I know that I can use these on my envelopes or indeed on my little pockets something I want to tell you about the edge take your trimmer take the edge off if you do it in a very tidy way so that you are keeping this edge perpendicular 
to this edge here, take that off, then what you end up with is another piece of card where you're, where you're ready to just go again and you can work your way down and just make some more and you can make them in a different colour. So although I've made lovely bronze ones, I've also found on some of my projects I wanted purple. So I literally just started another row and I added a couple of shades of, I think I used purple and pink and I used some of my pink shades of washi tape and I've got a coordinated effect in colours that really go and I think that's where the magic happens. You get the colours to work, you add the pattern and the stripes and it really comes together. Let's talk about adding these little closures to your projects because they don't look like much do you? Do they? They are just little circles of fun but they are so valuable and it's such a really useful technique to have at your fingertips. I just wanted to share this. So I've been making three pocket envelopes. I will be doing a video to show you how I make these. They're just very easy envelopes from one sheet of paper with three pockets in them. I'll show you one that's finished. Here we go. So there's one with a little closure and it wouldn't work as well without, I don't think. So the flap goes behind it and in here I've got three compartments. One, two, three. Um, again, I've actually sealed this with washi. So what I want to do on any of these that I make up is make sure that the closure goes in exactly the right place. And I think the risk with closures and adding them is you can end up with just a little bit of the flap tucked under and it doesn't really stay shut. So what I like to do, I'll just take an example, is take my negative space and use an off cut of the negative space, the cut out, the piece that's left over when we've done the punching and use this to make a mark in the right place on the back of my envelope. So I'll just work out where the middle of this flap is. So let's work in centimetres because that seems to be what's in my head at the moment. And at about six, make a mark. And what I'm going to do is take my negative space and position that so that where the flap finishes, I can just see the flap, I will put my closure, I'll put a dot for where my hole of the closure will go so that I know I'm going to be able to tuck most of the flap under the closure. So I want the flap to be not absolutely butting up to the middle of my little circle because I'm going to have a brad in this and that's going to need some space. So I use this negative space to imagine where I want the closure to be and I put a mark where I want the centre of the closure to be. And so one of my tips is using the negative space circle for positioning your closure so that you can get it right every time. We've talked about using scrap card, we've talked about decorating your closures to really complement and add value to your projects and I'm going to share in a minute a few of the different colours of brads that I've been using to also bring all those colours and tones together. So if this was a project where you wanted to now add your closure I just use a needle, and this is the needle I use to sew up my single signature junk journals actually. Let's take one of these, I take my needle and I eyeball where the centre of that is, I think I can estimate that, don't really have to make a mark. Push my needle through, don't go too far, I don't want too big a hole in here. I'm also going to make a hole in my envelope back. Again just being quite gentle with that, mind your fingers time, push that through and then it's time to choose a brad and I just want to share with you some really lovely brads that I have found and I bought them on Amazon so I thought if I shared them with you they might be ones that you're able to get hold of too. So I found by doing research that there are lots of different sizes of brads. In fact, there's almost an unlimited number of choices. So I've been playing with really teeny tiny ones. So aren't they little and diddy? 
So I have a packet here of, I think there's even, there's a few hundred in a packet. And this means I can choose colours that go with whatever the particular project is again. So I've got some nice botanicals there and some neutrals. So perhaps with a bronze and gold colour, I might pick, let's have a look, might pick, might even pick that bright green. So I've got a diddy one, let's do that. Let's put those on the side. Take my little circle and the last tip on my page is to make sure that you split your brad pin horizontally and by that I mean as you push this through you want, I'm going to open it up a tiny amount before I push it through and that makes life easier too. Just get my fingernail in, just a little space, tear that, pull that metal apart, push that through the hole and when you open up the brad don't make it too tight so there's a little bit of give for the envelope flap to tuck under and I leave it with the pins here horizontal so parallel to the top of the flap which makes it less likely that when we're putting something into the envelope it gets stuck underneath one of those brad pins and that gives us a closure in the right place and I can tuck that flap under and I know that there's enough hold because the flap is in the right place relative to the circle because we used our little negative space in a, in a smart way. So that's how I like to use a bit of colour, different brad sizes. I vary the brads, I've got some bigger ones here and I'm going to have a play with those, they were also off Amazon and something I've been playing with as well, in fact I think I made little notebooks in my envelope journal the other week with these, let's open that up, aren't they absolutely fantastic? Yes I did. So this was the envelope journal I made from junk mail, just ordinary envelopes and I used one of these, in fact I think it was one of this size, in the notebook that I made, which I really think makes it so smart, there's just something special about a sort of mock brass brad, what do you think? Does it add something? So this set, again from Amazon, has got gorgeous little gold brads in and they're in lots of different sizes. So that's a really useful way of buying your brads, absolutely teeny tiny ones down there and I'm going to make lots of use of these, I can't wait to play with those. So that's my envelope example. Let's have a go and just show you what I do with some of these pockets because the design of these and the use of the closure is just a bit different. So these are just simple pockets where I've run some stitching around. I've added extra pocket on the inside and again I said I'd just enhance the decoration to coordinate with the closure. So a lovely little butterfly on top. This one's awaiting the sewing. How about we play with this one? So I've added a closure and I decided a little bit of a muted soft blue would work perfectly well with the patterns here. What I've used is a lilac painted closure with some lilac washi. Again, the washi is on the pocket as well. And all I've done is just make a hole as I did before on the envelope and put that in. Let's add an eyelet. So I've got eyelets again, one of my recent obsessions. That again is from Amazon. And I just pick, should we have a silver one? Because this seems to be a asking for silver. I've made a hole in the top part of the pocket and I am going to just squidge that through with my crocodile and really what I wanted to show you with this is how I use string to bring the closure and the hole into one to hold it together so maybe take a couple of lengths of string there fold it in half and bring that through Just 
pull that through like that. And what that gives me is the ability to take one piece of string and I tuck it under the brad, wrap it round once, and take the other piece of string, tuck it under, and wrap it round, pull them both down here, and I've got a closure that I think looks really neat. I can just tidy that up and make them a similar length. Again, my tip for this would be make sure you leave a little bit of capacity for the string to sit behind the closure. And these are my closures for pockets and envelopes using basic supplies. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and do subscribe if you'd like to come back and see me make these pockets. If you'd like to see me make my three pocket envelopes from a single sheet of paper. And check out my video where I make that envelope journal from junk mail and envelopes and scraps and lovely pieces of paper. I hope to see you soon.